Gretsch Electromatic 5427, Gretsch Electromatic 5420. They look very similar, but there are some differences. Let's see what they sound like. Hello YouTube, uh, you're watching Hogan's Hideout. Thanks for checking the video out. Uh, please consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up. I've got two really cool Gretsch Electromatics, uh, 5420 in Cadillac Green and a 5427 in Midnight Sapphire. <music> recently did an unboxing on the uh, on this 5420 and did a video for that. It's uh, Cadillac green, it has a gold hardware, black top filter drawn pickups, matching headstock which is nice. Uh, this one has a rosewood fretboard. The 5427 which is right here is a, a new Gretsch model. Uh, it's, it's something that's available at Guitar Center and Musician's Friend now I think. There's no information about it on the Gretsch website that I can find, uh, no official literature. All I've seen is what's on the Guitar Center and Musician's Friends uh, websites. It also has gold hardware, it has the tombstone inlays, new style Filtertron pickup they're calling the FT5E. So these are very similar guitars. They're both full hollow bodies. This one has the sound post bracing. This one has the trestle bracing, which is more like the 6120s. They're both the 6120, 5120 style body shape. They both have gold Bixby uh, tremolos. The, looks like the same bridge on both of them. It's a tunematic style bridge. Black, black top filter Tron pickups. This is supposed to be a newer design. Uh, you heard them in the sound clips. The FT5E, this newer design, is supposed to be a little fuller sounding. I think it's a little brighter. This one seems to have a little more thump. The 5427 sounds, to me, sounds really nice with overdrive sounds. There's a lot more separation between the notes. Uh, for thumb picking, I enjoyed this a little bit more because it's got a little bit more low end, a little more thump when you're thumb picking. They have the same control layout, the two volumes, uh, the master tone control, master volume, and three-way selector. This one has the traditional thumb, thumbnail style inlays. Uh, the 5427 has the tombstones, which I think look really great. This has a matching headstock, which is nice. The 5427 has a standard black headstock. Same tuners on both.
things that's interesting, the 5427 is actually made in China. The 5420 is made in the Samic factory in North Korea. This is where they've been making this electro, uh, electromatic hollow body for some time now. There's been some concern online about uh, the possibility of the hollow bodies being made in a Chinese factory. Uh, ha having this one here for a couple of weeks now, and then this one also, they're both very well made. The fret works great on both of them. The fit and finish is very good. I'm not noticing really any differences in the quality or fit and finish of these two guitars. There are some differences, but it's not related to that. So I, I wouldn't have any concerns about that based on the two models that I've seen here. They're both very well made. So the 5420 still is still using a rosewood fretboard. Uh, it's a nice dark piece of rosewood, very smooth. The 5427 is using laurel wood for the fretboard, which is which is becoming a popular alternative to rosewood, especially for a lot of the imported guitars. Uh, we probably will start seeing more and more of that. It has a nice appearance. This one, it's a little lighter. This is a little more chocolate colored, as you can see. The uh, 5420 is a little little darker fretboard. On the hardness scale, they're both around 2400, so similar hardness or density to the woods. Feel and sound very similar. I think Laurel is a good alternative to Rosewood. We're certainly going to be seeing more of that. I don't know if the 5427 is going to stay in the lineup uh, or if it's something that was a special run for Guitar Center and they're not going to be making any more of them. Again, it uses trestle bracing, which is, which is what you see on the higher end uh, professional series Gretches on the hollow bodies. Uh, the like standard 6120, I think those are all trestle brace. There were some certainly some differences in the uh, amplified sounds. I, I had them running through, both running through my Fender Princeton, my 64 Custom Princeton. Uh, there was a little slapback delay from an old Boss DM3 analog delay. All the reverb you were hearing was on the amp. A uh, little bit of tremolo on a couple of clips also off of the amp. The only other effect for the overdrive, I used a Wampler Tumnus pedal, which is like a Klon style overdrive pedal, just a little bit of that. The FT5Es and the 5427 are a little brighter sounding. I can definitely hear it in the overdriven clips. Uh, again, with, the, uh, with the, the flat pick and the thumb pick on the cleaner sounds, especially when palm muting, the 5420 has a little bit more thump to the sound. Just personal preference. They both sound very nice. <laughs> One of the things I would consider replacing in this is the tone pot or maybe the capacitor or both. Uh, the 5427, the tone control, it works very well. It's a nice smooth continuous roll off of the tone from 1 to 10. The 5420 doesn't have much effect on the tone until you get down to about the last 10 or 15 percent of the tone control. It almost acts like an on-off switch for the capacitor. So that's something I may want to replace. The volume controls are fine. Three-way switches work good on both of them. I've got the 5427 here. It belongs to my brother. Uh, he got some flat wound strings. I'm going to put those on for him and set the guitar up with the flat ones. I haven't done anything to that guitar yet. This one I have set up. Uh, it plays great. Sounds great. Uh, I'm going to uh, put the flat wounds on the 5427. I'm going to do a short video on that. And then compare the, the sound with the flat wounds to the clips that I made uh, today with the round wound strings, the stock round wounds. I think these are the same strings on both of these now. I'm sure they are. It's a 11 through 49 gauge. It's, they're either a Fender or the Dario XL, which if they're not the same, they're similar strings. Uh, I think the Dario is making the Fender strings now. <laughs>
one more thing to note that's kind of interesting about these, uh, and I'll put some pictures up here so you can see, but the tremolo uh, bar on the Bixby on the 5420 sits closer to the pit guard. It's not as much room between the tremolo arm and the body, and the spring is fairly stiff on this. It works well, it's just a, that's the feel of the unit. On the 5427, the tremolo arm sits quite a bit higher off of the body, and the spring is much softer, so it's, it's, a, it's really a, a nicer feeling uh, tremolo. I know a lot of people replace the tremolo springs in, in the electromatic Bigsby's, uh, a little bit longer spring a little, and sometimes a little bit uh, softer action on the spring too for a nicer uh, feeling Bigsby. The 5427 already has that. I don't think anybody would want to replace that. But again, they're both both really cool guitars. Uh, I'd be very happy with either one of them. It's, do, you, do you like Midnight Sapphire and Tombstones? Do you like electromatic green uh, and the thumbnail inlays? They both have the gold hardware. Uh, the 5427 is available also in an orange stain uh, with a flame maple top and, and chrome hardware. All the other specs are the same as far as I know. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking the video out. I hope it's helpful if anybody is looking at uh, either one of these guitars. And uh, I'll see you next time.